In this example, we have a Motorola processor in a BGA package and a custom ASIC in a quad flat pack package. Remember, to run Universal Scan, all you need is the BSDL files from the vendor websites. In this case, I got the processor BSDL from the Motorola website and the BSDL for the custom ASIC from the ASIC vendor. Given the BSDL files, you just drop the parts on the screen, add a port, hit scan, and instantly you see what every pin on every device in the scan chain is doing in real time on your display. Down here we've connected some seven segment displays to the address bus and to the data bus so we can see what's going on in this design. In this case I see that my processor is stuck at around 800 hex. That makes sense here because I destroyed the prominence board and the processor can't find any code to boot off of. But the point is, I can see that, and I did it quickly and simply with nothing more than a download cable and a laptop. I can also see at a glance that the oscillator is definitely driving the input buffer of the processor, and that the crystal is driving the input buffer of the custom ASIC. Since both of these parts are in sample preload mode, we're able to monitor all of this activity without affecting the operation of the circuitry. It's completely unobtrusive. The circuit runs at full speed, completely unaware that we're doing any of this. Suppose for a moment that we knew that the processor was having difficulty communicating with the ASIC. Well, the next thing we would want to know is are all the data and address lines connected correctly between the processor and the ASIC? How would you check that continuity today without any fancy expensive tools? The answer is you can't because of that darn BGA. Of course, with Universal Scan, it's a snap. We just connect some virtual dip switches to drive the output buffers of the ASIC on the data bus, for example, in this case. We hook up some LEDs to the input buffers over here at the processor. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the processor in X-Test, and I'm going to tell it to tri-state all of its lines. This will allow us to drive the data bus from the ASIC into the processor without any bus contentions. So again, the processor is now in X-Test with all of its lines tri-stated. The custom ASIC is also an X-Test. I then use these switches to drive the output buffers from the ASIC into the input buffers in the processor, which I'm monitoring with these red LEDs. So just by flipping these switches, I can do a very quick continuity test across the entire data bus between these two devices. Just like that. This other bank of switches controls the tri-state enables. If I take one offline, then of course, I get no response. Put it back online, and now the bit works fine. To test the address bus, which goes the other way from the processor to the ASIC, I just take the ASIC, put him back in sample preload mode, take the processor, put him in X test except allow him to use the switch values, and now I simply enable the tri states on the address bus, which are these red switches here. The second column of red switches drives the output buffers. The red LEDs monitor the input buffers of the processor, and the green LEDs are at the other end of the net over at the custom ASIC. So now if I simply drive that data line, or in this case address line, I can see that I definitely have continuity between the red and the green LEDs, which means I have continuity at both ends of the net. To get the processor back online, I simply right click, click on sample preload, hit OK, and boom, we're right back where we were when we dropped into X-Test. That's really all there is to it. You just drop the two parts on the screen, add a port, hit scan. You then add virtual switches and LEDs till your heart's content, and you can now see and control every pin under the BGA. And remember, this works if the part is blank or programmed. So now you can do all of this testing on a board that just came from the factory with nothing but blank parts on it. You no longer have to wait for firmware to be complete to start checking out the BGA hardware. Since we have complete control over every pin on the processor, we can now drive the address into the prom and watch the data bus come out. Uh, we can drive a D to A, we can monitor an A to D. Anything the processor would normally do, we can now do manually to test out the hardware on the board, again, before the firmware is complete. It's easy with Universal Scan.